Good day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the off-grid enclave. What you see in the background there is a problem a lot of people run into when they do renovations. The load-bearing beam of the roof is rotten in about 2 meter 50 length. The damage is quite extensive, but still repairable. At some spots we barely have about 30% of the wooden beam left. In this video I will be showing you guys an option to repair rotten wood like that. We start with cleaning the rotten wood of loose parts and the immediate area with a hoover. So we have a semi clean work base. We are not gonna clean out the wood too tightly and gonna leave some rotten parts there because once dried properly these pieces of rotten wood will suck epoxy like a sponge. As just mentioned the dryness is an important part. You should really make sure that the rotten wood is properly dry before you start repairing it. Also make sure that the source of the incoming water has been fixed. Let's cue some fancy music and speed up the boring parts. Let's go over the situation, how it presents itself and our plan how to fix it. I hope this top tier MS Paint picture will be good enough to explain that. We have a rather standard brick wall with a concrete frame on top. Resting on that concrete frame we have the load bearing wood beam that is carrying most of the weight for that section of the roof. You can see in the picture I hollowed out the beam this is about in scale how much of the original beam we have left to work with. The roof situation that caused this by leaking water has been fixed. The remaining wood beam has dried out quite nicely by now. The plan is to use epoxy to reinforce the existing wood and make it much more water resistant, heat resistant and overall harder. For this job we need an epoxy with a very high viscosity and a very long drying duration. With these epoxy properties the dry wood will suck the epoxy quite nicely and it will have long time to do that. I will be using an epoxy that takes about 6 hours to dry and harden and it will be having a viscosity very close to water. Before soaking the wood in epoxy we're gonna add a metal skeleton via adding a metal band and connecting that with plenty of reasonable sized screws and bolts. The reason for adding the screws first is that we want the epoxy to also make a good connection around the screws so later on the connection between the epoxy and the next step which will be filling the remaining air pocket with concrete. Given enough reasonable size connection points, the screws, it should make a very stable connection and have no problem on long term stability. So these are the tools we're gonna be needing for the next step. A simple screwdriver, reasonable size screws, a steel band and metal scissors to cut the steel band. Using a tape measure we get the length of the part that needs to be repaired. We cut the steel band in roughly that size. And I will cue the music for you guys again, so we skip the boring parts. After fixing the steel band in its proper position, we drill a lot of holes into the rotten beam so we easily get the screws in later on. The more screws we put there and the longer they go into the wood and stand out into the air pocket the better the connection of the concrete with the wood will be. After these steps are done, 
Your beam should look something like this. I will be giving you guys a good close up on my beam here. The next step will be to apply the epoxy on the rotten wood. Mixing epoxy causes hazardous gases and those can cause cancer. Use appropriate safety measures. Here is my tools that I will be using. The canister with the epoxy and the canister with the epoxy hardener. Two empty buckets and a yogurt can for mixing. My gas mask and plenty of gloves. And two brushes to apply the epoxy evenly on the wood. When mixing epoxy, make sure it is always done in a well-ventilated area. If you mix inside, make sure you open all the windows for ventilation. It is very important for epoxy to keep the two components in the right ratio. Make sure you keep that in mind. Now that we have the epoxy ready mixed, we're gonna apply it on the rotten wooden beam. First by pouring very little and gently stretching that out with brushes to gently wet the wood. After that layer has been sucked in, we're gonna pour a lot more of the epoxy onto the wood. The dry rotten wood will suck the high viscosity epoxy like a sponge. It will take multiple layers to saturate the sucking ability of the wood. I used about half a liter of epoxy on two and a half meter of beam. And I did two sessions with about half a liter epoxy each. To stop the high viscosity epoxy from leaking down onto the walls, a simple formwork was done using a few planks. This will also double down as mold for the next step when the concrete gets filled in. The epoxy will take about two days to dry properly. Using the power of the internet we just waited that much, so I can give you guys a good overview how the beam with the epoxy now looks. You can see the wood is quite shiny as the epoxy hardened all the way through. All the screws should be quite nicely hardened into position as the epoxy got sucked in and dried around their connection. There is a few dips of the epoxy on the bottom of the mold but that should not be a problem for the connection of the concrete later. You can see I ran the steel band all the way through and put plenty of screws to get a proper connection for the concrete. As you guys made it that far into the video, give it a thumbs up and a like if you enjoyed this content. If you want to be kept up to date with future projects and videos that I do, subscribe to the channel. If you have any input, questions or feedback, don't be shy, hop on our Discord, I'll put the link down in there in the description. Last but not least, we will be making the concrete to fill the mold. For that we have a 120 liter bucket to mix the concrete in, a hand mixer, sand, a bucket full of cement, some water and the usual tools to apply concrete. I did a sand to cement mix with about 40% cement for this one. We mix it all together for a few minutes with some water and we get our most favorite 50 shades of grey. After we're done mixing the concrete, we go step by step and apply it to the mold.
properly press it into the mold so the concrete will fill all the little spots and the air gaps in between. Make sure to properly wet the surfaces before you apply the concrete. After we are done with filling the concrete, we wait at least two days before we remove the mold. A few days later now the wooden planks have been removed and you can see the final product. The concrete still needs more time to properly harden out, visually however things will not change much. With that I wish you all best of success on your renovation projects, thank you all for watching, enjoy your day and make it count.